Hi friends, welcome. You're here with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, and uh, we are finally doing the video that we've talked about for so, so long, and uh, that is the art commission that uh, Uncle Badger, or Thomas Dale, is having me work on, and I'm really excited. It's a collection, um, and it's kind of like circus-themed, and um, I don't think he minds if I share the intention, the magical intention of the artwork, because I think it's important when I explain to you guys what I'm doing. And uh, everybody knows that <coughs> Thomas Dale and I have been close for a long time. Hey from the Dark Pool, nice to see you. Otis, it would be great if you could just... Unedited videos. Uh, my apologies, let me just fix this. <coughs> so, the intention behind this working and behind this magical mixed media art piece is to kind of like bond our friendship so that one day we can come together which will be so good. Hey Jack Jolly and Wales, so good to see you my friend. Brittany Humphrey, didn't you send me these socks? I was putting them on this morning and I thought I think that they are from Brittany. Um, so I was thinking of you a lot this morning. Um, you guys know I'm scatterbrained. I'm trying my best to focus. Hello, Madam Butterfly, uh, Dark Pool, Waz, kisses to Waz, and uh, Jack Jolly. Okay, I got everybody. Great. <clears throat> so here's the cool thing, because we have like mostly British people in the chat besides Brittany. I'm sending these to the UK. So if any of you guys need some kind of art commission out in the UK, we can do it. And the reason we, Thomas Dale and I, thought of these magical paints was because we had talked about him ordering things for me and I was like, yeah, it's a bummer I can't send herbs though. I can just send like art and, um, you know, there's a lot of things like with the borders that they're really like strict on. Uh, you can send it out of the UK, but they won't really let things in. So I was like, dude, I'll sneak herbs into the paint and you'll get herbs from my garden and it will be so cool. Yeah, I love it. Um, so scatterbrain me. I'm, I'm trying to stay on focus. I'm going to show you the project so far and then I'm going to show you how to add the paints and the herbs together and then in a different video we'll paint with them together. Um, but I, I, that's really difficult to do all online. Um, where are we at? You don't think you did but you love the <laughs> Maybe it was Gabby. Actually, if it wasn't you, I think it was Gabby then. Now I feel bad. But I got them with um, in my trailer, and I got them with a little um, jack-o'-lantern keychain, and it was awesome. So, um, pff, my bad. But yeah, uh, you guys send me lots of things, and I always think of you individually and as a group every day. Um, and I'm so blessed and thankful to have everybody. Let me get to Jack Jolly's comment real quick found a book from a woman who was born in 1900. It's a book about Welsh herbal remedies and every herb has a Welsh poem. Oh, I love that. I just love that. A Welsh poem um, it uses. It's amazing. We should meet in person. I'll show you. Yeah, as soon as I get the chance to make it over to the UK, I have so many friends, not just from the channel, but um, I've been making friends from around the world for quite some time and I'm just so excited when I do get to uh, the United Kingdom to go all the way from Northern Ireland through Scotland uh, down all the way to Wales and you know over to uh, Ipswich. <laughs> I have just friends all over so it'll be beautiful and uh, you guys will know when we start planning that. So in the meantime this art piece is um, a five piece collection. I used to fear the number five and I'll just be frank about why. It was the amount of times that one of my partners has admitted that they cheated on me. Uh, so I hated the number five for a long time. But then when I started to learn about like numerology and stuff, it's not it's something that I actually fancy. So um, let go of those things, you guys. Fear and uh, angers and attachments to things that are um, toxic. Just let them go. It took me three years to stop being angry about that situation I just described. And I was the most bitter person. No one wanted to be around me. No one wanted to even sit and eat a meal with me. Because my energy was so upset. And so betrayed. And I was exuding that. And uh, 
one day I just woke up in the morning and I wanted to call them both and say, I forgive you. And one person was like crying and was like, oh, thank you. And then the other person was like, um, okay. Doesn't matter. I let the weight off my shoulders. So I just want to say that about like the number five um, and what it used to mean to me. But now I just attach it to things that are attached to the universe. So here we go. Some of the things that I'm working on and I've been, I started this piece about three weeks ago. And like you guys know, a lot's happened in between. Um, family members passing away. A bunch of other stuff as well. Um, so I'm taking my time with it. And while I'm taking my time with it, I'm really, really putting intention, love, energy. Like um, when I listen to music that I love and I dance and things like that. I've had these pieces of... Um, Uncle Badger's, these, this five-piece collection that I'm going to show you. Um, you know, I work on it a little bit every day. It's cut out. It's on my altar every day. Otis walks over it. Uh, it's right next to my goddess, who's so, so very powerful. Uh, and I look at it every day and think about Thomas and I's friendship and how beautiful it will be when we do meet up. And another thing that I do when I'm making magical, because that's, that's energy. Like the, the high that I get from listening to music, the high that I get from listening to music is amazingly powerful. Add that with things that are going on inside your body, like menstruation or happiness or love or anger would be a bad one, but things like that. The energy that goes into that is so personal and so powerful and such a stamp, just like DNA is, but you just can't read it or see it. So some things that I'm keeping on top of each of the pieces while they're on my altar um, is this amazing, amazing little rock that Thomas sent to me, and it stays on my friendship tray. When you guys send me little things like pendulums, trinkets, stones, things you make from clay, um, you guys have seen my friendship tray before, but I'm just going to go grab it right now so that you can see it now. Hi, Moth Moon Goddess. So good to see you. <laughs> so many kisses. I'm going to get my friendship tray. Oh, Steve's calm down. And show you what I'm talking about. So behind it... Behind the tray, I keep this, which is a new gift from a taxidermy witch family member, and it's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture of the moon on the canvas. So I keep that back there, and then I also keep this. This is a Yule gift from a family member, and I keep them kind of like this on the wall. Um, and this unites all of us, you guys. She made this to unite everybody uh, in the channel and kind of make us one uh, collaborative group. And then I'll show you my friendship tray, which is funny because when I was a kid, there was this, um, you can still search it on YouTube, I know because I looked like a year ago, there's this um, children's musician who came to my elementary school when I was in kindergarten, and his name is Jim Valley, and he, he sings this song called Friendship Train, and it goes something like, the friendship train is coming to down, put on a smile and drop that frown, I don't know, I've just like, some things like really stay with you, and that's something that kind of stayed with me was, oh Jim Valley, bless you, I have his cassette, it's somewhere, um, so here's my friendship tray, not my friendship train, um, Joyce Jordan sent me this amazingly cool, evil eye um, ward that she made for me on some herbs, which I love. And then we've got like this clay woman from Magical Mandy. And um, this is from Brenda, who's always on the channel. One of my oldest friends from the channel. Um, Brenda or Tess made this one. Um, but I just have loads of little things from you guys from like little things that you send me are so amazingly precious. Like these mean more to me than money or lots and lots of things. Um, Ash made me this out of um, paintbrush sticks and it's to inspire art. So like the paintbrush, you know, wood. Um, 
this came from Black Moon Coven. She made a sigil and a bay leaf for me. Um, you know, like awesome little scarabs. And my mother gave me this because she thought I would like it. Um, so I just have lots of things from you guys that I keep on this friendship tray. And when I work, I have them next to me and it's really important. And then this bottom tray part um, came from a thrift shop, but it reminds me of what my grandma used to put like her brush and her comb and her um, atomizer and her makeup on and stuff and it's just very special to me. So the reason we brought up the friendship tray was because this is what I keep of Thomas Dale's on there or Uncle Badger and that's who we're doing the art piece for. The collection. I mean it's a collection it's not just one because I, I can't do, I try but I can't do anything small. You know, I, I can't I can't seem to do anything just small and simply because money doesn't really matter to me. Getting my art out there does. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've been kind of like, while the pieces are at my altar, keeping different things on top of the pieces, and um, do you know, I give this a kiss and I put it back down and I let it charge. Some other things that I keep on there is the selenite chunk and there's a reason for that is because Thomas and I met because um, through Tangerine Layla's channel and she always says love light and selenite boop. Hey Joyce Jordan nice to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. So I use the selenite to just kind of like keep on top of the pieces at my altar uh, because that was a connection that brought us together was through Tangerine Layla's channel. And I do dearly miss her, absolutely. Every day I think of her. Um, what was I going to say next? What, oh, and also I use my big jar of pennies, about half of which um, B. Young, who's here on the channel, who I was talking about those rocks. Otis, stay out of the friendship tray. You can bless it, but you can't mess with it. Um, so th these are pennies that are pre, like 1982 or before. Uh, 1982 is the year of my birth, so that's pretty cool. Um, but I keep pennies in here that are those years because um, they have a copper base. Now I keep these for a lot of reasons because of my personal blood type. But in this working, when I would put it on top of some of the art to charge it, it's because copper is very drawing, it's very magnetic. Um, so it brings energies together, and that's the purpose of this working, is to have a solidification and a connection, a deep connection of our friendship, because we're so far away. And I'm just so inspired by that. Now, let's talk about some things I will do, and we are going to make the paints. I have everything here, we are going to make them. I just really want to explain mm, all the levels of how I'm doing this working. So, the next thing I have to say is, y'all know that lately I've been at the sea a lot, and um, foraging and things like that, and yesterday we were reading out of Scott Cunningham's Earth Power. Um, we did two videos yesterday from that book. Was that yesterday? Day before, I think. I, I can't remember. Day is just kind of because I work at night and the day and I nap whenever. Uh, so, but talking about the seawater and how drawing uh, it is and connective it is to the whole entire world. And I said, next time I go to the sea, I'm going to go fill up this big uh, glass so that I have seawater. Okay, he's in the UK and I'm in America. And we want to connect this friendship bond that we have. So how will we do that? I thought seawater would be a lovely thing to have um, maybe in a bowl next to the working while I'm painting um, with a candle in it or beside it um, because those waters are what one day will help us meet because I don't fly and he knows that. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already talked about like, you know, it only takes five days to get over to the UK from Seattle. Okay, so <laughs> the water that we put in here will be that like connecting type of energy because one day those very waters will connect us. So just saying that, and then also when I'm painting I will have this astral travel lamp that I made. It is a good idea, right? 
right dark pool I really th I thought of that actually right before the video <laughs> while I'm setting up for a video I'm just like really really thinking about the subject at hand and uh, yeah that one to me was like ding hello of course um, so inside this astral travel lamp we have frankincense resin these are all things that Scott Cunningham's magical herbalism which is right there that green book says um, these herbs do for us magically so I have um, bay leaves which are great for astral travel um, I have rose hips in there which are great for astral travel I have a magic mushroom which is obviously great for astral travel um, cinnamon uh, star anise lots of things in there and so this is an oil lamp and this is something that I think originally comes from hoodoo traditions which as you guys know about a year ago I was studying hoodoo and backwoods witchcraft and um, old wives tales and um, not voodoo or voodoo but hoodoo in general because I like the aspect of it that took from the Native Americans and then the um, Africans that were brought over okay so <clears throat> Anyway, my Etsy shop's down below if you guys need any magical art sent anywhere around the world. Um, oil lamps within the U.S., we can make them for any intention. Just message me. Iridescency, it's lovely to see you again. Very, very good. So I'll have this lit during the time that I'm painting because I want that. Since we're so far away, <laughs> I want to have that connection between us. Um... Because so many times, and I'll, I'll just tell you this, so many times I've been down in the dumps about trolls being on the channel or my life situations with the, my husband leaving me um, or other things, you know, that are personal. And he and I are very personal friends and have a very strong um, soul connection, I believe. So that astral travel lamp will really help us connect on another level because we're so far away. Okay. Then another thing I was thinking of doing was with this bottle of seawater that I gather and I use during the working, I was thinking of because there's five pieces and just recently I got this as a gift from a channel member. There are these five tiny little amber glass bottles. I was thinking of filling these bottles half up with my seawater that actually won't work because I can't send water overseas. Soaking these in my seawater. And then when he gets them, put his own seawater inside and then keep one by each individual painting or hang it from the individual painting, etc. Um, because again, that will connect our waters and make sure that we do get to come together and meet one day. Hi, Michelle Cantrell. It's so nice to see you. Welcome, lovely. Um, so these are just cute as buttons, these teeny tiny little amber glass bottles. And yes, they are glass. That's very, very, very important to me. If they weren't glass, I'd just leave it out. Um, and then I thought, while the working is going, while I'm doing the painting itself, I will use and burn a pink candle, which is like a beautiful, loving friendship. Pink is that gentle love energy, whereas red would be more like passion and lust. And then I will do some simple candle magic and inscribe on the side with my father's uh, pocket knife that he gave me um, as it in the law of attraction, using the law of attraction, speaking as it's already happened. So instead of saying, one day Thomas and Jen will meet, saying, I'm so happy Thomas and I were actually able to embrace one day, which means we would physically be together. And I think that that uh, works really well. As the candle burns down, your words, your energy from the carving, your energy from your heart and your mind, go. it all transfers through your mind, your heart, your hand, into the knife, and onto the candle. And then, as that burns down from your deity light, preferably, those energies vibrate into the universe, and it happens. I think they go onto the astral and resonate with a flame and then it happens. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel it. Okay, so next, what do we want to talk about? Um, 
let's uh, show you the art pieces so far and then we will start blending up the herbs and the herbs that I'm using today are powdered dragon's blood wormwood absinthe that I grew in my garden and the plant is still living at this house it's been transplanted and I can actually see it through my window so as I'm working with this I will be looking directly at her I you know her my plant um, and then snake sheds uh, how are we going to get these all ground up? Good question. We're going to put intention into it with this, but that's not going to grind it up for paint. Then we're going to put it in a coffee grinder that I use just for my witchcraft. Um, okay. So now what do we want to say, Jennifer? Mm. We're going to show the paintings, yeah. Now they're not painted yet because I haven't made the paints. We're going to blend up the herbs and do that now. But here we go. Mm. Also have to say, because I'm using a flat canvas that doesn't have a hook, because shipping is quite expensive from the US to the UK, so I decided to do um, a flat small canvas and five of them. I sewed, using my little sewing box back here, um, some little hangers on them and then used not magic with intention when I tied the corners and let me try and flip that for you so you can see and it's just gonna be enough to hang them right off of a wall okay so now let's talk about what we have here and what I'm doing so mixed media can be tricky especially when you use pictures and paint But, this one represents Thomas. <laughs> it's this amazing clown. Uh, I absolutely love, love, love this picture. And then this, like, Elsa Mars looking chick, uh, who I don't know what her circus uh, thing was. But behind that, I'll be doing the magical paints. However, before I started, I traced with a little mechanical pencil where the main pictures would be because I do the placement of this first and then I do the painting. So now when I get ready to paint, I'll just remove these and I'll know where my open spaces are. Open space, open space, open space, open space. So I will know where to put my pictures first and then you can just go ahead and, you know, use your lines again or you'll know just about where it'll be. And uh, I'm excited about that. So that's uh, the first one. This is the, like, you know how if you see a fashion show, there's always, like, a main piece that everything else is inspired by? This is the, the main piece. And then over here... I have this one and this represents both of us because he's kind of like because since he's one of my oldest moderators and um like dearest closest friends he literally seems to bend over backwards for anything that I've ever needed and then this is me uh kind of dressed up directing the show I guess that was my inspiration for that um so there's a lot more painting space on this one I'm excited to have more painting space and then, so that's piece number two. This one I'm going to have to put back together because it slipped. I feel the reason I made this one is because I feel he's really carried me through some really um, rough times. Um, both with personal life and the channel and so this is a picture of like a black and white rickshaw with some clowns and then this is me I'm a Gemini so I'm two personalities and I'm always just like crazy in my head so this is him help carry me and then this one uh, is just lovely it's a uh, it's a circus freak, obviously, and it's a half woman, and then she's just balancing on this swing. Um, 
And so that is the inspiration for that. So that's piece three. Piece four. Again, to represent me and him. <laughs> I think it's kind of self-explanatory. He's hilarious. Good friend. Always makes us all laugh. <clears throat> and piece five is us coming together one day and meeting and having a, a just lovely friendship in the future. And so we have this roller coaster. Uh, it's a black and white picture of a roller coaster. The number 13 is on there, which I find as a lucky number. And uh, there's a man down there. And then here's me with a, it's like the snake lady from the circus. And there's a snake around her neck. So I love to like do mixed media pieces like this. Hey purple sky, it's been so long. So nice to see ya. So this is piece five. And then now I just need to, um, let's see. I think I gotta check on my working in the back and then we can start mixing up the paints and I can show you exactly how I do it. So what do you guys think of the collection? Um, I have a, I got this circus book and it has like, I don't know, 2,000 pictures and I'm just, I haven't made an oracle deck out of it, but I want to and, uh, I mean, who doesn't like freak show? You know, we love freak show. Um, so I would like to find the time to make a freak show collection just to have, uh, you know, but I have to get my ideas out. If I don't get my ideas out, I get sad, and so I have to work as hard as possible. Um, another thing that you could connect to these paintings if you dearly trust your friend. Now, I would never do this if you didn't dearly trust your friend. If you think in any way that they might magically harm you, do not share your hair, your DNA, your fingernails, your blood, any of that. But I told you guys I was making this awesome dread wig out of like when I brush my hair, my hair that comes out of the brush, for my little squirrel who's just like so tired and broken. I'm making him a little dread wig. You could certainly um, put your hair into this, blend it up and add it to the paint. Um, you could hang a piece on the side. It doesn't matter how weird you are, it just matters the intention. And also, you know I love being weird, so we'll see. <laughs> um, so what would I need? What did I need to do? And then we're gonna blend the paints. Oh, check on the working in the back, right. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, be right back, and then here's kinda what we're looking at, y'all. I'll be right back. Good boy, thank you. Good boy, thank you. Okay, and we're back. So, um, I, I am always having workings going, whether they're in the back behind you on my altar. Um, 
I have one for a client going in the back right now. This is a working. This knot's around my neck. That's a working. Um, it's just always going on. All right, so um, first of all, let's talk about the difference between, and I hope I got to everybody. Hey, Dragonfly Whisperer, so nice to see you. Yeah, I'm surprised Thomas isn't here. He'll show up, though, before the end of the video. And if he doesn't, he'll be like, dang it, I missed it. Okay, so let's just talking about putting intention into things. Okay, so, and then, so, okay. There's no way to do this other than to just show you. But I have this, and it has a cord, and that cord comes from energy, right? And I didn't... The only thing I'm doing is pushing this and put it and holding my intention over it when they blend up. But before I put it in here and before I let the technology do the working, because believe me, if I could blend up warm wood in here to mix into paint, I would, but I can't. It would take forever. But that ingredient would be have so much intention. So let's just start with the warm wood. <clears throat> Because when we do this action, it's just like I said, from your mind to your heart, out through the knife into the candle from before. When we use this action, we're actually putting our energy from our body, from food that we ate, that's transferring into the pressure and the pushing, and then our breath, saying whatever we're saying over the herbs, and our energy that comes from our stored muscles, all goes into this. Hi Brandy Johnson, really nice to see you here. So even though when I put the wormwood in here, even though I know that it's not going to chop it up enough to be into paint, it doesn't matter. That's just a really lovely way to start it because your physical energy went out and into that. So um, Really, as I'm pushing down, I'm really thinking about, you know, us coming together and meeting one day, um, having our friendship stay strong and, and healthy, and things like this. And I go in both directions, because it's love and lightning. It's as above, so below. It's We all understand that, right? So... I mean, it smells lovely, and this is, oh yeah, this is an olive wood, mortar and pestle, and when we think of olive branch or olive wood, don't we think of like, I offer you an olive branch, it's like, almost like a friendship symbol, um, at least in my eyes. So that's why I'm using this olive wood one, because I have all kinds of mortar and pestles, but that's why I chose the olive wood. So putting my intention into that, and then, once you feel it's enough and charged, holding your energy over, over it, blowing your breath onto it, saying words onto it, it's all very, very powerful stuff that's absolutely free, and in my opinion, more, more potent than, you know, something that you got online that you did never touch or do anything with. I don't know, you know, it, it just depends on the person, but listen, I grew this, you know, so there's just a lot to it. If I went and forged it, it would be, you know, also very, very powerful. But remember, if you guys are getting your herbs online from just a general shop that's not charging them in the moonlight like I do with mine, or with the intention for magic, it's just a little more that you have to do once you get the herb, okay? So next, we're going to actually use this little zip zap puppy, and I just have to unplug you to use the cord. Okay. Okay. 
And this is plastic, so it's not my favorite, but it's going to grind the herbs up well enough. And the, But the inside is metal, which is pretty cool. But it is going to grind the herbs up well enough to um, be blended into paint, okay? So I'm taking those herbs that I add the intention into. This is absinthe wormwood from my garden. Absinthe wormwood, why am I adding it? Because I grew it. it. There's so much of my energy in there. And this is a friendship working. And also, because uh, absinthe wormwood to me really attaches to this like astral, spiritual type feeling type realm. And then as well as... Um, it's great for spirit communication, and I am asking my deity to be with me and connecting with a lot of you guys in the future. So, we lock it, and then we push the button, and I start out with the, the lower grind, and then I go up to the higher grind, so... energy that comes from this cord from the wall is still energy right so it's not all bad but holding your intention over while it's spinning you can transmute that energy into your own and keep it cupped into this in my opinion so it'll take a while but if it doesn't break up fully, like it doesn't seem to have broken up fully here, it just kind of dusted it, you can use a spice grinder. Um, or you can just break it up with your fingers, which is probably what I'll do because then it's adding more parts of me to the working. So now we've done the absinthe wormwood, and then we'll be adding the absinthe wormwood to the black acrylic paint. So it's just going to have some very, very interesting flex of that wormwood going through it. Um, we'll add those together at the end. Let me get this out of here. Right. So one thing that I had to do before we started was the dragon's blood. I use a different um, mortar and pestle to do each of my like different type of stuff. So I use... When I do a resin, I have a resin grinder, and I'll show you what that is. Resins are really sticky, so you wouldn't want to grind, um, you know, resins in here and then have it be really sticky and then grind something else. You could if you needed to, absolutely. Like, if that's, if that's all that you had, then just do what you need to do. But um, when it comes to the snakeskin, you want to use something that's especially for poisons or things that you would never, ever, ever, ever put in your mouth. So you could have something that's for bones, for snakeskins, for, um, what else would we put in there? Um, uh, hot foot powder. You know, really, really hot, spicy stuff. Something that you know is never, ever, ever going to touch your mouth. And that's what I do in this one. And this is called... Uh, Molagete, I do believe, and it's like what they make salsa and guacamole in, um, but it really grinds things up really nice with this stone action, and I was working on a hot foot here, um, and that's why that's over there. So, for the snake skins, when you prepare them, you're going to want to prepare them in something that your mouth would never, ever, ever touch. Um, because that would be horrible. And then you can go ahead and do them in here afterwards. We did the dragon's blood powder. So we took the dragon's blood resin rock. It looks like a little brick. And we crushed it up in here. And it's sticky like frankincense or myrrh or benzoin. And then I just keep it in one of these bottles. This will be very easy to add to the red paint. The colors I'm using are red, black, silver, and white. 
So I will be adding the snake skins to the white and to the silver. Titanium white, like Bob Ross uses. Um, now, when I do my paintings, I'm going to paint with just paints first. And then after that, as like a top layer, I'm going to use the paints that I mix together. So I'll be taking these wormwood bits that I chop up really, really, really fine and adding those into the black paint just for a layer on the top. Because if you're trying to paint a picture and herbs are inside the paint, um, you won't get any sharp lines. Um, it might dry at a different pace. Um, there's a lot to it, but I just do like a light brushing over the top. Um, the dragon's blood powder is going to be really, really sticky. It smells so good. It's like my favorite smell on earth. Almost. Mmm. <laughs> so good. Yeah, smell that while you do it. Um, so let's try and grind up some snake skins in this here little grinder. And again, if you don't have a grinder, you could just use a really good knife and a cutting board. Like, this is just going to be easier in some ways. So let's get back down to it. When I use taxidermy, or when I use spirit connected herbs like wormwood, I animate them. And you guys know I animate most everything around me. <clears throat> However, when I'm using wormwood, um, I'm really asking the spirit that I feel resides in the wormwood uh, absinthe plant, hi Otis, to be with me and to help me. Um, when I'm asking taxidermy items like snakeskin or something that an actual physical spirit was attached to outside of the plant world, I try to really visualize that animal. Um, and if you know where your snakeskins come from and you know the actual animal even better, and just ask them, you know, to help you and, and say thank you and um, give give grace for the ingredient that you have. Snake skins are amazingly powerful. You guys don't want to use these when you travel in the car. When I brought this home, this um, this used to be a full jar, but when I got it from a friend off of eBay and I got it home in my car, I almost got hit three times. Uh, by another car. Uh, snake skins are crazy for invisibility and if you need any invisibility workings, my Etsy's down below, um, I can send you an amulet and I've gotten lots of good reviews from them. But my, my me myself personally, I use them a lot for like if you're gonna do a witchcraft like foraging or working and you don't want anyone to like really see what you're doing because it's just private or personal or people might think what the hell are they doing? Um, so you're going to want to use that pulse to where it like falls down again and pulse. If this thing was full of snake skins, they would blend better. some of my energy into it and blending again. Okay. So again, it's not like completely blended because we didn't fill it up, um, but we're going to be able to add that into the paint. And let me just unplug it and show you. You always want to unplug it before you put your finger back in there. God knows it's like a freaking garbage disposal. Very dangerous. Um, so there's some smaller and some bigger pieces. Some of these bigger pieces I might just stick right into the paint uh, on the top. However, there's a lot going on under there that I'm going to be able to just mix right in. Or you can go ahead and take your kitchen knife and cutting board and just chop it up as finely as you can. That mula jete is going to really, really work well. 
Uh, and then to get it all out of the cracks, you just use a dry toothbrush and brush out the powders. So let's um, let's mix some dragon's blood into some paint, and I can show you what I'm talking about. And I need to plug you guys back in. Before I do my working, I always put rose water on my hands or Florida water, but lately I've been using rose water a lot more. Um, lovely smell. So plug you guys back in. Um, so I hope that even if you came into this late, you're able to start from the beginning because there's a lot of elements to the way to, that I think and the way that I work and what I add to things. And um, so yeah, I hope you're able to see it all. Uh, we're going to make some paints. Let me find a little dish that we can mix paint and herbs in. Mm. No, that won't work. I thought I had everything. A little jar. You just want to make sure you don't let the air get to it. Like Tom Hanks says away in Castaway when he's trying to make a fire. The air got to it! And then he looks at Wilson and says, the air got to it! That's complete animation. Hi Karen Crutchfield, nice to see you. Uh, if you guys remember Castaway, I think that people use animation for survival and that's a really good example of animation. Um, that volleyball that he made into a poppet was completely his best friend and uh, it's just like it almost makes it like I'm not gonna cry but yeah <laughs> it's uh, precious and it's important to me and animation has been something I've been doing since I was a little kid so uh, so when we did the dragon's blood when we got it from the rock to the powder which I did off of camera we used this I don't know soapstone mortar and pestle that I just used for resins because it's really sticky you don't want to go putting a resin into this wood thing unless you use it just for resins um, <clears throat> because if you go to do an herb next the herb could be real sticky not that that's bad but it, if you're able to it's nice to have separate things for separate things. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to start with the paint, and I just have a basic red acrylic paint. Nothing super fancy, nothing super cheap. And if it's in a jar and it's sealed, you're going to be able to save it, but I would do it the same day. As you're pouring the red, put your red intention into it. So, red, I ask you to, you know, connect this friendship to have, like, 11 passion through our friendship, etc. However you would like to say it. Or you can just talk to the paint itself. But you can definitely add color magic into these mixed media <clears throat> art pieces. And then I chose the dragon's blood powder to go with it. Because dragon's blood powder is this like maroony pink. <sighs> dragon's blood is life, I swear. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead. And you don't want to add too much and then hold your intention over it perhaps blow your breath blow your breath with your intention while you're visualizing while you're thinking and then go ahead and find a little tool and mix her up I'm going to use the back of the paintbrush so that it just kind of comes off Let's see if I can do this so you guys can see.
and just mix it until all the powder is gone. It might take a little bit. And when you paint with it, it will just look like kind of like mm, thicker paint, I suppose. And have this like really cool texture to it, in my opinion. And it smells amazing. I don't know if it'll smell amazing after it dries, probably not, but those herbs will be locked into the paint and locking, locked into that uh, working for all of time. So after everything's mixed up, it still looks like paint, it just looks like thicker, a little, uh, almost like a bubbly type of paint. Again, when we mix the Wormwood Absinthe into the other ones and the snake skins, it's going to have a real texture to it. But resins are easy, you guys. Resins are really easy to mix into magical paints because they do powder and because they are um, just much easier, you know, to get into there. So there we are. There's the red. And uh, I will do another video showing you guys the progress of the paint and uh, then now I'm going to do something with this because I don't want to waste it. Hi Dottie the Psychic, it's so lovely to see you, welcome. I'm just going to paint my symbol on my hand um, because I am doing this working today and that's going to dry and connect me to what I'm doing with my artistic hands. Um, so, Thomas Dale, it's a bummer you didn't get to make it, but I'm so glad to do this commission for you. And uh, again, you guys, remember that we can send magical art anywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, sneak these herbs into the paint. And uh, please go back and watch the video if you didn't see the beginning to see the art pieces that we're working on. They're circus themed. Freak show themed, I know not a lot of people like that phrase, but um, I think if you respect it, then it's fine. <laughs> and there's just a lot of elements to this, so that's that. Um, I can't wait to show you guys the progress. Let's just look again at the last picture of the collection. And the paints are going to go behind that, and there's five pieces. So, <clears throat> message me on Etsy if you guys need anything. Uh, I would love to be of service to you guys and add my energy into things for you. Have a really beautiful day, and I can't wait to see you soon.